The difference between house cleaning and cleaning for your short-term rental is huge. And we have an expert joining us today to share with us those differences. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by TurnoverCleaningTips.com. This is a website where we bring the hosts together and the house cleaners together, and we want them to make friends and get to know each other because all hosts need cleaning and cleaners need jobs. So it's a perfect place to come together. Check it out, turnovercleaningtips.com. All right, on to today's show. This is a very exciting topic, the difference between house cleaning and cleaning for your short-term rentals. And we could not be more blessed to have with us today an expert who is known all over the Airbnb or vacation rental industry by his podcasts and his books. This is a guy that really knows what he's talking about, and he helps homeowners get paid for their pad. Please help me welcome the author of the book and the podcast host of Get Paid for Your Pad, Jasper Rivers. Yeah, so my name is Jasper Rivers. Back in the day, I was uh, had an apartment in Amsterdam, and I was looking for a solution. I didn't like the long-term renting model. And so I tried Airbnb. It, uh, it took off. It was a giant success, and uh, over the years, I've uh, started helping first friends and then other people to get better results uh, with their uh, Airbnb listings and uh, other short-term rental listings through uh, my book, podcast, and uh, blog, which is called Get Paid for Your Pad. Well, I'm so excited that you joined us today because you've got a phenomenal podcast and a phenomenal book, and you are just a trailblazer when it comes to the Airbnb space. And from the house cleaning perspective, we're always trying to figure out ways that we can better work with our Airbnb hosts. And so I'm hoping you can give us some insight on that. Absolutely. The most important thing to, to realize is that an Airbnb or short-term rental cleaning is, is very different from your home cleaning. Um, that's because it's, it's part of hospitality, right? And so in hospitality, a clean space is one of the most important things that people are looking for when they're, when they're traveling. And I think the most important thing to remember is that the one thing that people don't want to be remembered of is that somebody else was just using the apartment, you know, the, the same day or a couple of days before, right? And so that, because that can really kind of ruin the experience. Uh, just finding like one little hair in the bed, for example, can completely ruin the experience for people because they immediately are remembered that somebody else was using the bed and they start visualizing what was going on and that can completely ruin it, right? Uh, but also, you know, things like uh, cleaning out the fridge, not leaving, you know, half open bottles um, and even like, you know, toilet rolls, just always replacing the toilet rolls. And if you really want to go the extra mile, like putting a little sticker on them, which is something that we we can learn from the hotel industry, for example, you know, putting one of those paper ribbons on the on the toilet seat, right? Which is actually something I just arrived at my own apartment here in Cali, in Colombia, and which is managed by a property management company. And uh, when I walked in, you know, there's no trace of anybody having been here before. There was everything was completely set up as if it was a brand new apartment, including that toilet ribbon, including you know, the, the little shampoo bottles that were not half empty, you know, the towels, like everything, the whole setup, uh, had, there was no trace of anybody else being here in the in past, which is, uh, which is, that's what you're striving for. I'm glad you brought that up because I know that sometimes hosts do go stay at their own properties. And as a result of that, they are looking at it from a different perspective, even from the guest, because they're the ones that are paying for the cleaning. Is there anything that you prefer or that you have a preferences for that house cleaners do that are above and beyond just regular cleaning? Really making sure that there's no trace of, of any past guests. And then the second thing is what really helps is if the cleaner um, really thinks about who is coming, right? Because essentially what you're doing when you're cleaning a space is it's, it's not really cleaning a space. It's more like turning it over. You're turning it over to receive a specific group of guests, right? And that group of guests, um, they have different needs depending on the composition of the group, depending on where they're coming from. And so what really helps if the cleaner kind of thinks along those lines and, uh, and thinks about like, okay, who are these people that are coming and, and what can we provide for them? You know, so for example, if there's a, uh, if there's a small uh, child in the group, for example, so it's, it's, it's really like thinking ahead 
and uh, thinking along with the host that is uh, that is really helpful for us as as hosts. That's really interesting. I I don't think a lot of house cleaners have actually gone that far as to think ahead because if you do have a small child, you would be thinking about things like high chairs, for example. I think that's an excellent tip. When guests leave, is there anything specific that you would recommend house cleaners do that is above and beyond just regular cleaning? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the the most important thing when the guests leave is that uh, the cleaners, that they check for any damages. Um, Because if there are damages, then the host only has a very limited amount of time to uh, either claim part of the security deposit or contact Airbnb. And so oftentimes when it's not spotted in time, then uh, the host loses uh, the opportunity to to recover those uh, those damages. So that's number one, really like inspecting the place and also taking stock of the inventory, just making sure that nothing's gone. You know, sometimes guests by accident will will take something with them. So I think uh, taking inventory and making sure that everything's still there. And then if it's not, just either notifying the host or, you know, in the perfect world, uh, even taking initiative and, and just replacing it, right? So one of, I was very, very blessed to have a cleaning person in my uh, apartment, a lady that I'd known for a very long time. And she really took care of all those little things, right? So I never had to really worry about my apartment as I was traveling and managing it remotely. I could just trust that she wasn't just cleaning. She was also, you know, buying like uh, some flowers to put on the table or buying a plant or anything that needed to be replaced, even a light bulb or something. She would just do it. And then she would just send me uh, the receipts. And then I would just add that to her, her payment. Sometimes I would, uh, I would, you know, I would pay her a little bonus as well because because I appreciated it so much. You know, the cleaner is really an essential, really, really essential person in in the whole management of the of the short term rental unit. And so I think when cleaners really go above and beyond and provide extra value to the host, um, I think that the host will really uh, appreciate that and they will reward the the cleaners typically. At least that's always what I preach to. To my host, I always tell them like, hey, your cleaning person is probably the most important person in your business. And so you should really, you know, appreciate that person and give them extra responsibility and motivation to to not just clean, but really think as part of the team, think as part of the team managing the, the home, right? And in the end of the day, of course, the success of the of the host is also the success of the cleaning person. Well, let me ask a question about that, because I know that there are a lot of house cleaners that are insistent on having contracts. So if they were going to go above and beyond, should they put that inside their contract with the Airbnb host? Or is that just one of those teamwork kind of things where you just expect that they're going to go above and beyond and the host is going to go above and beyond and you're both going to work together to to build this business together? Or should you have that all spelled out that if you have a light bulb burned out, I'll replace it, I'll send you the receipt, and it's all in writing so that there are no surprises? I would say it's 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 definitely a good uh, a good thing to to have everything written out so that where you know the expectations are aligned. You know when you when you're cleaning somebody's house and you're like an hour late, it it doesn't necessarily affect the situation of the of the owner. But with short-term rentals, this is really really important, right? Because oftentimes there's like a daily like a back-to-back uh, checkout and check-in, and so you know the guests will leave at 11 a.m., but then the next guests are arriving at 3 p.m., right? And so if you're, if you're late, that really affects the, that experience uh, for the, if the apartment isn't ready in time, that can really affect the business. And so that's one more thing that uh, I think uh, it's good for cleaners to keep that in mind. Tell our listeners where they can go to find your podcast and your books and your training courses and your consulting and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So people can go to getpaidforyourpad.com. Uh, I've published over 300 podcasts that people can listen to entirely for free. And we also have uh, an online coaching program for people who want to get into property management, which is called the uh, SDR Profit Academy. All righty. And that is Jasper Rivers from Get Paid For Your Pad. He's brilliant. And he's got a bunch of courses and a bunch of stuff that can help you if you're thinking about branching out and going out into the space where you're going to rent out an extra room of your house. I know, super exciting. I'm going to leave links in the show notes so that you can find everything that there is to know about him, his podcast, and his books. All right, if you found this helpful, please pass it on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.